Dilks finding a couple of lands. Gonna go ahead and return that Kabir crossroads. And now we're gonna transmute Thalaria West. Go find some more zero mana action. Dilk's kind of sitting pretty. He's got that primeval titan attack. He's got Kevin Jones down to eight. Pact of negation and summoner's pact at the ready. Could basically do a decent amount of stuff this turn with Azusa also. But Kevin with those two copies of Thing in the Ice just needs to chain cantrips together and should be all right. Yeah, and I want to point something out that's really subtle here. All these deck building decisions you make with Amulet Titan have such dramatic ramifications because you play so much of the match with your deck in your hand and tutoring and making decisions. This week, only one copy of Engineered Explosives in the main deck for Dilks. In prior weeks, there was often two copies. Right here, another Engineered Explosives would do a lot of work cleaning up those things in the ice. Not available to Dilks. Already burned his only Engineered Explosives. Uh, it was necessary. Oh, uh, absolutely. But these are the, the ramifications that come from these choices, and they haunt you throughout the day. If you just make one little misstep in deck building, you can be completely punished by it. And that's what makes what these Amulet Titan players have done so, so impressive. They're always on the cusp of having the next evolution and seemingly having a near-perfect 75 for every week. Well, given that Kevin started his hand with a lightning bolt in an island and didn't immediately cast a cantrip. I see a blue spell in hand. Looks like it's a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, if, I think if he had drawn a cantrip, he would have just immediately fired it off. I think you're right. So here comes Snapcaster Mage. And is this going to earn the Pact of Negation from Dilks? I think so. I think you want to deny the counter here. Yeah. D Dilks agrees. Got to go ahead and fire off that Pact. Keep the Titan alive. Uh, deny Thing in the Ices getting another counter off of them, which is certainly important considering one of them's at two. And I think Dilks at this point just knew that Kevin was out of spells. Yep. Good read from Dilks. Perfect time for that pack of negation to get deployed. Gonna pay for a bunch of packs. Plenty of mana available to do that thanks to the Titan. Mm -hmm. And Azusa. Azusa helped. They play nice together. Also, access to quite a bit of life gain this turn. Can play Kabir Crossroads, bounce it with a bounce land. Dilk's going to go ahead and rise up to 14. You're seeing a slower game from Amulet Titan right now. They're capable of doing this. There's some more life gain from that Kabir Crossroads. Another Primeval Titan in hand. Can't deploy that quite yet. But here come Titan and Azusa rumbling into the red zone. Titan going to go ahead and search up two more lands. See what Jones likes here. Like we're going to get Slayer's Stronghold. And Vesuva. Copying Kabira Crossroads. Going to gain more life. And Dilk's just slowly creeping out of range of a lethal attack. Yeah, now at 18, I believe. Mm -hmm. So double thing in the ice. Won't even do it. Nope. Now. Nope. Perfect life total to survive at one life, even if all three of those creatures get to come in next turn. Dilks was ready to go to the next main phase. We hadn't done blocking yet, so we should probably take care of that. Amulet Titan players always focused on the big picture. We don't have time for things like combat. Here now is that Coalition Relic. With Jones at two, Dilks passes the turn back. Need to have a huge turn here from Kevin Jones. Opt into Faithless Looting into another spell. Something like that would do it. The draw with Surgical Extraction. That is not going to do anything for Kevin Jones. He says, yeah, I'm dead. Narrates his death for Dilks. Dilks says, I agree. Another impressive Amulet Titan game here on camera. Slowing down the pace there, playing that longer game, using all of the options efficiently, and finding the W is Matthew Dilks. Yeah, and you see Amulet kind of oddly taking a con controlling stance that game, tutored up Engineer Explosives, mm -hmm. used uh, Pact of Negation to protect the Primeval Titan and stop Kevin from getting more counters on those thing in the ices, 
and use the the tutoring ability and uh, Azusa's land bouncing ability and everything to replay Kabira Crossroads, gain a bunch of life. Like Amulet was the control deck. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things about Amulet is not only can it switch its role depending on matchup, it can very much switch its role depending on draw. It has a lot of flexibility in how it's going to play any given game. Uh, and that's what these players have come to love about the deck. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at sideboards now. Jerry, this is your chance to give Kevin Jones his sideboard guy that he's so desperately looking for. This week in the sideboard, Jerry Thompson has recommended three Molten Rain, two Spell Pierce, two Crackling Drake, two Ceremonious Rejection, two Anger of the Gods, two Abraid, one Shatter Storm, and one Beacon Bolt. Jerry, what is Kevin bringing in here? Molten Rain, Spell Pierce, Abraid. You could mess with Crackling Drake, but I'm not about it. Okay. And what are you trying to trim from the main deck in this matchup? What do you think isn't particularly important? Lightning Axe does not do enough. You're just short of killing Primeval Titan, and you have Lightning Bolts and Abrades to kill the other smaller stuff. Uh, so you can definitely get rid of the Lightning Axes. I mostly like the Ascensions. I like the Snapcaster Mages to uh, tag team with the more effective cards that mm -hmm. you're siding in. Sure. Uh, so you're shaving on some Lightning Bolts because you're bringing in a braid. You're cutting some Lightning Axes and then uh, probably shaving on some Cantrips. Sounds good to me. Meanwhile, over on Dilks' side, we are looking at one Hornet Queen, one Pact of Negation, one Ramanap Excavator, one Reclamation Sage, one Tireless Tracker, two Engineered Explosives, two Negate, four Path to Exiles, one Chameleon Colossus, one Ghost Quarter. What do you like on Dilks' side? I would bring in Paths, and I would assume that Dilks is going to bring in the Reclamation, Reclamation Sage in anticipation of Blood Moon. Correct. I have wisely sidestepped that with Molten Rain. However, Reclamation Stage still has some applications against Pyromancer Ascension. Mm -hmm. And what else are you doing? I mean, you, you talked about how the second copy of Engineered Explosives would have been good, but how many copies do you actually want? I think you can bring in another copy here. I don't think you want to go as far as three. You only really want three copies against decks that are trying to go super wide. But you saw that Amulet Titan is apt to slow down in this matchup. I know they're keeping the hive mind planned in in this matchup. They really like it here. You'll probably see a Pact of Negation uh, enter as well, maybe trim some of the unnecessary lands that are present. You probably won't see the Colony Garden. It doesn't do a whole lot in this matchup, so that'll probably hit the road. And then some other trims you can maybe go to. If you can read for no Blood Moons, you can talk about not having Coalition Relic. We'll see if that's a read they're willing to make here. You know, we're getting into the late stages of the day. Maybe some information started to circulate around the room about it, specifically what are in players' sideboard. And Kevin played against Jonathan Rossum, uh, had a Molten Rain, and it was fine, but Rossum was just like, yeah, if that was a Blood Moon, I would have just lost because he, he wasn't, like, set up to beat it at that point. But with three copies of Coalition Relic, four basic forests, it's, it just doesn't do enough. Yeah, I think you can certainly see games where it can go either way. Like there, It all depends on draw texture. In general, I like your choice of Molten Rain right now. These players know how to play around Blood Moon. They expect to play against Blood Moon and are doing so effectively. Dilks, uh, as we mentioned, trying desperately to get some SCG points right now to climb up to the top of that leaderboard. If you are trying to get SCG points, Get to those Invitational qualifiers. You can't miss them. Also, I know you want to play that Invitational, one of the biggest events in Magic every single year, twice a year, in fact. $1,000 to the top eight at your Invitational qualifiers. You'll get those SCG points I mentioned. You get a nice play mat. And, of course, our beautiful personality tokens. You can check out go.starcitygames.com slash IQ for more information. I just want to see a Molten Rain copied by a Pyromancer Ascension. Woo, that would be dirty. Very, that very dirty. Make me very happy. Here you see Cedric Phillips lurking in the background again, as he's wont to do. Cedric <laughs> took us out to a incredible Italian meal last night. Basically, more food than any human should ever consume. Some of the best lasagna I've ever had was last night. It was delicious, and I could not finish it, which has basically never happened between me and a lasagna. Mm. <laughs> and... Uh, Stu Summers ordered something. What was that dish? It was it was like a, a seafood pasta dish, but it contained an ocean. When I am telling you this bowl contained at least four and a half pounds of seafood and pasta, I am not exaggerating. I have never seen as large of a pasta bowl. The bowl was bigger than Stu's head. It was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It was ridiculous. enormous. 
and he had just been eating nonstop for what seemed like hours. Yeah, we were done with our meals for like 10 minutes, and Stu was still going, and you looked at his bowl, and nothing had changed. It was exactly it was the bottomless. same. It bottomless. Good, yeah. good food here in Cleveland, I have to say. I've enjoyed all of my food thus far. Yeah, not too bad. You get to find the, the nice local spots. Uh, Cincinnati had the like mac and cheese, grilled cheese, mm. donut place. That place was good, like Tom Pretty and good. Chi. Yep. It's like players have kept. Kevin just going to go ahead and lead on Fetchland. Dilks, turn one botanical sanctum into Amulet of Vigor, and Kevin has the spell pierce. Nice he's got, response. He's got a spell pierce. Not a lot of cards, it looks like. Down to six. Yep, Mulligan here for Kevin Jones. I think Dilks is on seven. But this is ideal. I mean, Spell Pierce has some good targets, but it also goes dead very quickly. So if you can snap this off on any way to disrupt Amulet, either countering uh, an actual Amulet or even in Ancient Stirrings or whatever, you're going to take it. I think that's true. Also, in the late game, occasionally you can mess up their mana after they've cast a pact. Even if they're going to pay for the pact, it can buy you another turn in a lot of situations, and that's important as well. Here's an Ancient Stirrings from Dilks. Going to take a look at the top five of the library. What's waiting there for us? Looks like he's got some options. Always good when you have multiple cards from your Ancient Stirrings to choose from. That's what makes this card so powerful. It does have a restriction, but if you build your decks correctly, it's, it's not really a restriction. You, you're just getting the cards you want. That's a real interesting grab. So Dilks took Slayer's Stronghold, and certainly a key card in Amulet. But one of the things about Slayer's Stronghold is you often prefer it to be in your library rather than your hand because of the way it enables your primeval titans. Yeah, that makes me think that Dilks needs to get to three mana for an Azusa or a Coalition. That probably. is my guess as well not wanting to take the risk with this second Ancient Stirrings. Not sure he's going to be able to find an untapped source there. So, able to find engineered explosives with the second copy. Kevin Jones with the follow-up, going to cast Metamorphose. It begins. Two mana floating, going to take a draw here from Jones. This is the best Metamorphose deck in modern, modern? Eh, Storm is probably the best Metamorphose deck, right? Maybe. Manamorphos and a pass from Kevin Jones. That is not what you want to no, see. No, not ideal whatsoever. Dilk's going to go ahead and tap that three mana as we suspected. It's for Coalition Relic, though, not Azusa. One of the new super important adds this Amulet Titan deck has picked up. Dominic Harvey, the originator of the Coalition Relic love, at least not here on the SCG Tour, when Edgar and I did our <laughs> podcast about Amulet Titan just a couple weeks ago. He was willing to assign credit directly to Dom, and he said that's where the rest of the Cabal kind of found inspiration to include the card in lists. Kevin again just passes the turn, thinking the ice on three counters. I think Kevin is Phoenix flooded right now, which is a very, very strange place to be in. Yeah, he's got some Phoenixes, uh, or a Phoenix at least, and a Crackling Drake. Bird flooded. Here's Engineered Explosives on two at the ready to deal with that thing in the ice. And you see again from Dilks a slower paced game. Very he's, comfortable in this role. He's in no rush, especially with Engineered Explosives to slow things down. Kevin not really doing a whole much, whole lot of much. Uh, Dilks has plenty of time. Another Metamorphose here. That's going to go ahead, generate a couple mana, draw a card. Always just one spell away from completely going off here in this is a Phoenix deck. Usually it's Faithless looting. Let's see if Jones can find a copy here. Let's see if Kevin can find anything. Really. Any, any action. <laughs> something. Even a fourth land. Do something, Kevin. Something. Going to play oh. a land. A tapped fourth land. Remove those counters. Again, doing nothing. Disastrous draw here from Jones. Meanwhile, Dilk's going to go ahead and untap six mana at the ready. Is it Primeval Titan time? I see some tapping. 
There is prime time. Gonna go ahead, do a little searching. And Kevin can't really do anything about this. This no, is kind of the cannot. this is kind of the point of the game where Kevin's spells lack a lot of efficacy because he really has to be the aggressor in this matchup. And things like lightning bolt, a braid, they're just not gonna deal with a prime primeval titan and an opponent that has access to ten mana. You know, like you need to use those cards to slow down Dilks' early development. Maybe a braid a coalition relic, cast a molten rain here or there. But now it basically just comes down to a race and whether or not Kevin can actually assemble 20 points of damage, which, given right. the Primeval Titan, is going to have to probably be like closer to 28. Yeah, going to be tough for Kevin. Dilks took double bounce land, returned to Laria west to hand, so it might be more of the same on the next turn. Even more Primeval Titans entering the battlefield. Let's see what Jones can muster here. Just hard cast Crackling Drake does not make me feel good about Kevin's chances. Yeah, Kevin might just lose. On the next turn, I mean. That's He's almost possible. certainly going to lose the game. But. Quite possible. And that Drake would not even be big enough to effectively block the Titan. And that is going to be the play from Kevin. Playing what feels like a standard deck this round, unfortunately. Take a draw off that Drake. Lightning Bolt in hand. I think two Phoenixes. Dilk's going to put a counter on that Coalition Relic. Take a draw. How about another Primeval Titan? Is that any good? Kevin says, you don't really need to worry about that die. I'm probably going to be uh, scooping pretty soon here. Slayer Stronghold and Boros Garrison at the ready to enable that Primeval Titan. Yeah, some good long-term planning by Dilks, taking that Slayer Stronghold, mm -hmm. actually, like you mentioned. Generally, you prefer it to be in the library, so you can search it out with Primeval Titan and untap it with Amulet of Vigor, but after Dilks got his Amulet of Vigor spell pierced on turn one, he knew that that was probably not going to be happening. Yeah, so. adjusted his plan, rightfully yeah. so. And this, this is a good setup here. Here come those two Titans. Can go find four more lands, can Dilks. Doing a little counting here, seeing what we're capable of. It's only 14, Kevin. Sounds like there's a judge call right now that's slowing the pace a little bit. Yeah, I think it was whether or not Dilks has to tap this Coalition Relic to cast the first Titan. So you have the counter from the Relic and some mana, but then, like, some lands got picked up. Right. Land got played, whatever. And Kevin Jones says that's enough. Doesn't matter what the result of this is. I can't pull this game out, and I think correctly so. Extends the hand, and we see Matthew Dilks improve his record to 11-1. And, and just a smile. A rare smile from Matthew Dilks just cruising along with Amulet Titan today. And I have to say, when I talked with Edgar on the podcast, we went 